Hello and welcome to Witness. I'm Raggy Omar. They say love conquers all, but sometimes there are just too many obstacles. Ezra Levy was a nice Jewish boy who fell in love with Daisy, a nice Jewish girl. The problem was they were in Iraq. Iraq was once home to a thriving Jewish community of 150,000, but almost all left in the 1950s, including Daisy. Young love was thwarted. Ezra was perfectly happy in Iraq and stayed. He was fiercely secular, went by his Arab name, Izzet, and had many Muslim friends, including girlfriends. When the Americans invaded Iraq in 2003, the writing was on the wall, and Izzet, or Ezra, reluctantly moved to Israel. He was given a hero's welcome, his hosts thinking that he had made a political choice, but the honeymoon soon turned sour. Besides, Ezra's real quest had always been to find his long-lost love, Daisy. Filmmaker Inigo Gilmore followed Ezra over three years and got to know the last Jew of Babylon. Hello, hello, hello. This one? As a journalist, you can find yourself in some funny situations. I'd come to a war zone and ended up in a women's hairdresser's. My name is Inigo Gilmore, that's me on the right, and here I was with an 85-year-old man scouring Tel Aviv for a woman he'd last seen more than 50 years earlier. It looked like a wild goose chase. My journey with Ezra began here, more than two years earlier. Like many other journalists, I'd turned up in Iraq in the chaotic days after the Americans occupied the capital. I was keen to discover the fate of Iraq's Jews, whose rich history spanned thousands of years, but who now numbered just a handful. Barely 50 years earlier, there had been a prosperous, vibrant community of 150,000. I was led to the home of Ezra Levy, now almost the last surviving member of an ancient tribe, the Jews of Babylon. For Hanukkah, for Muslim. For the Jewish Hanukkah candle holder to framed inscriptions from the Holy Quran, Allah. the walls of his home were covered with multi-faith objects. It spoke volumes about his unique life. For the first time in many years, Ezra spoke to relatives in Israel who had left Iraq half a century earlier. My brother, what happened to you? I can't stop. I am crying and live the poor. I didn't know it at the time, but Ezra was the only member of his family who didn't go to Israel. A fight over a woman named Daisy had split the family. Before I left, Ezra went upstairs to retrieve an item of great sentimental value. You want to go to Jerusalem? I like to go, but don't know. You think you will go? Maybe your... in the end of my life, and see my family, and son, and this. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I'd see Ezra again, but our paths were to cross just four months later. To my surprise, Ezra had turned up in Israel. He was part of a secret airlift of elderly Iraqi Jews and was briefly hailed as a hero. He'd come, it turned out, in search of his lost past, but it wasn't a happy homecoming. 
Ezra only stayed with his family for a short time before moving into sheltered accommodation. This is for me. This is for me. All my life is changed. Now I am here in Israel. Must live the life in Israel. Iraq, Khalaf. I lost everyone in Iraq. 82 years. My friends in Iraq. My friend, my brother. All the time we are together. Father and mother. While he was still in Iraq, Ezra's family had not told him that his two favorite brothers were dead. Every school child here is taught that in an anti-Semitic world, Jews are naturally better off in Israel. But Ezra's own experience challenged this assumption. <laughs> ליהודי, אחד מהיהודים האחרונים באמת ששרד שם את עיראק, ואת סדאם חוסיין. בוקר טוב. בוקר טוב. חג שמח. היום אני באתי לפה לדבר עמכם ולספר על החיים בעיראק. סדאם חוסיין לא נתן ליהודים זכות חופשית בארצו. אם ככה, מדוע אתה עדיין חי? איך הצלחת לשרוד את כל זה? סדאם, אתה עולה. בפלוט כמה אחד על עף. אני בעיראק הייתי טוב. גן עדן, כי לא טובה עם הענקים האלה. הלכתי מגן עדן לישראל. Ezra feels lonely and stifled in the old people's home, but he comes alive during occasional visits to the ancient port of Jaffa, which still has a large Arab population. We are Arabic. I am Jewish Arabic. My country is Arabic. All of us, we are Arabic. Arab Jew is not a description easily accepted in Israel. Most Israelis who are originally from Arab lands have discarded their Arabness long ago. Ezra's sister Habiba visits each week, but she's reluctant to speak her mother tongue, Arabic. <laughs> Arabic. Arabic. Yeah. Arabic. Because everyone knows we are Arab. Ah. We are Arab. <laughs> Yalla. It's not exceptional for Israeli Jews to make friends with some of the Arabs who work for them. But Ezra's close relationship with Zahariya, his cleaner, 
is unusual. She addresses him in the traditional Arab way as Abu Saleh. At night, the party at night. I agreed to take Ezra to the family wedding in Zaharia's village. After all, none of his family were going to. Several months later, I returned to see Ezra after another trip to Iraq. Ezra? He appeared isolated and his thoughts turned to the past. He was more determined than ever to find Daisy, the woman who'd been at the centre of his family breakup. Ezra had asked his youngest sister what happened to Daisy as soon as he got to Israel. After waiting more than 50 years for the chance to see his long-lost love, Daisy, Ezra is not going to be thwarted. Join me after the break for the conclusion to their story. Mm -hmm.